You heard the news today, right? Of course I heard the news. It's going to change the wrestling world forever. I can't believe it. I don't know how I'm going to go on living. It's going to be so hard to even be a wrestling fan from now on. Think about all the trailblazing they had done for the entire industry. I know, Scott. I know. No more roads to the top. We're going to get through this together, Jake. Cody Rhodes leaves AEW and much more today on Pro Wrestling Powskis. Welcome to Pro Wrestling Palskis. How's it going, Scott Narver? It's going all right, Jake Lloyd Bacon. How's about your going, Zions? Uh, it's going great because it is always super fun to hang out here on the PWP with the live chat. Thanks to everybody who's tuning in live for the super exclusive live stream. If you'd like to join us, you gotta become a patron. Scott, it has been a uh, hefty couple weeks to say the very least man it's bonkers <laughs> there's stuff that might happen there's stuff that is happening there's stuff that's currently might happening right now <laughs> yeah it's uh it's been a really heavy news weeks weeks plural plural uh and it i think there were things happening while we were recording our pre-show today yes Yes, it is. Um, uh, we're even hearing about it in the live chat right now. We're going to be getting to that and and so much more. We got a big story to cover. Um, that the it's got the whole wrestling world talking, but that, I don't think this is going to slow down between now and Mania. I think it's only going to get crazier. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think that the season of chaos is upon us, and if I'm being honest, it's pulling me back in a little bit. Uh, I've been a little bit. Uh, I don't know, arm's length from current wrestling product. Whose arm, Kali? <laughs> um, almost. I think he's got like an extra inch, maybe. Sure. Um, but uh, I'm. I a lot of the news that's been coming out has have gotten me uh, more interested in tuning in just to see because you never know. Well, getting... and sometimes we do because <laughs> everybody's yeah, reporting on it. Good point. Uh, the people in the chat are actually doing some of the work for us, delivering some news, mm -hmm. uh, as well as a, a thinking that we're starting earlier than usual. You're very welcome, Andrea Beeler. <laughs> we did. We did try and start earlier today. She was in mind. And, uh, you know, we're trying to well, like uh, we, we said in the past when we do these uh, live episodes with the chat um, that is part of our Patreon. We want to make it a time that we can get the most people. We know we can't, you know, make it plausible for everybody, but we're trying to find what works for, out for everyone because we already changed from Wednesdays when that's when Dynamite was going on and fucking people show up left and right on Dynamite. So can't compete with Be that. People were actually leaving our live stream to go appear on Dynamite. Mm hmm. It was a real problem. Yeah. All right. Well, let's stop wasting time. Let's get into it. Oh, OK. Let's get into it and waste time talking about the stuff that's going on. So first things first, now just minor news, even though it happened less than 24 hours ago, it seems <laughs> because uh, uh, Buddy Matthews is all elite, formerly Buddy Murphy, formerly the love interest of an underage Mysterio. Uh, <laughs> I really didn't know where you were going with that. Um, and it was the best possible outcome. Yeah. Um, I got to tell you, watching this... I watch AEW Dynamite and sometimes Rampage with Steve Sears, who I used to do curtain jerks with. Yeah. And, um, you know, he go wrote Dave Made a Maze and he's just been out. He hasn't watched. You think you're at arm's length. He's 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 way he was way out. But then Punk brought him back in. So there's okay. a lot of people and there's a lot of scenarios where he's like, what is that? Who's that? What is this? And we'll initially try and take whatever it is presented to him. And then he goes. He usually asks questions because a lot of questions don't get answered, especially on AEW television. Sure. If he hasn't seen them. So yeah. he sees Exa uh, this, uh, Excalibur can only do so much. And we can only listen to him so much. Exactly. Yeah. So um, 
it's the kings or the knights of the black throne i don't know if they've settled on it yet because one week the graphic said one thing and then the uh justin roberts said something else so it's is like what are, malachi, what are you malachi black's group yeah okay and him and uh and brody king and buddy matthews comes out amongst it and is doing stuff and seemingly a part of it by the end um and the crowd was chanting holy shit and uh steve goes really <laughs> i said it's hey it's cool right. i don't think it's holy shit cool i think I, right. he's like yeah this is i've talked about this for a while now as i think that the aew fandom is like a level of hype that i wish that i could have um mm-hmm. like they are they love the product so much that everything is the biggest thing that's ever happened for the product. I think on top of that, I think it's, it's, uh, but they were also in Connecticut. So, oh, okay. Someone who's out of WWE and comes there. It's, it's oh welcome. Come on in. Oh, this is so fucking awesome. We love you. Oh shit. You do. I, I was just coming by and say, hi, no, have a meal sit down here's my underage sister be with her (laughs) okay who in who in aew could have the underage sister for for buddy who's who's barely legal aew (laughs) (laughs) who's yeah barely legal for buddy i don't know i'm trying to think of who who all's got siblings i mean it could have been I mean, if you really want to talk inappropriate, don't the, say it. The, the Rhodes's kid. Oh, okay. I was you. That that's was, a baby. Yeah, that was that's that's fine. Um, by the way, I, <laughs> I want to fine. I, I thought it was going to be even worse than that. I want to acknowledge Tim Redbeard uh, in the chat saying, uh, "I'm stoked to watch wrestling to try not to think about the horrible shit that's happening." Uh, yes, I agree. We're not going to talk about that stuff on today's program. Um, and please do not uh, see that as a lack of care or interest or understanding at how dire it all is. Well, maybe ah, you can take some of that from me, maybe, maybe, maybe for Scott Narver, <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, uh, welcome distraction. That's what today's episodes for me are going to be. Yeah. Get out of those family dinners where it's nothing but dire shit. Let's talk about <laughs> other wrestling stuff, buddy, Matthew. So he's there. I thought that I they mean, were, he, he, I thought he maybe they were great shape. I thought that maybe they were chanting holy shit because for a while he had the black stripe on his butt, remember, on his tights where he just looked like he pooped himself. And I was like, that's a that is a a, a ring accident preparation kit is what those tights were. I thought you meant that because he was under the the uh, Messiah. So oh, holy oh, oh, shit. Right. Oh, that he it's a combination of his two gimmicks. Mm-hmm. I mean, he he had great chemistry in matches against malachi black formerly alistair black and we so i feel like they m- probably are good friends i would just take a guess um so if he comes and it's like if it's them being like yeah we want to work with him why don't you come and join our thing then that yeah. usually leads to some good stuff he doesn't fit in with the group so far because too clean cut. he has zero tattoos yeah he's gonna need to get some tat some tats gonna need to get tatted up he could just buy yeah. those fake tat sleeves you know those like sleeves that you just buy and you slide them on. It's just like has tattoo designs. They should just all be Cody Rhodes tattoos. <laughs> the neck tattoos all over them. How great would that be? How long do you think until Vince owns the trademark for that tattoo? I well, what I liked better was I I, I like that. Um, they talked about it on Cornette's podcast. Uh, how long until they make him wear turtlenecks? Right, right. <laughs> Some I mean, he sort was of doing corrective- that. On- he was Something. doing that on his own for a little bit. Yeah. Cause it, well, maybe the cold air, maybe it hurt it. I don't have tattoos. Jake, does it, how long does it take for it to not hurt? Uh, like a, a couple days really. And then it's over. Mm. It's gone forever. Sounds, sounds horrible. Can't do it. <laughs> well, well, I guess here's another, uh, uh, <laughs> it's not in the same roster, but you know, for buddy Matthews future, uh, Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae welcome the birth of their first child. In an Instagram post, it was revealed that LeRae had given birth to a baby boy named Quill Gargano. The baby was born on February 17th after LeRae was in labor for more than 24 hours. And I tell you, these NXT people, they can't just 
have a quick birth and get out of there. Nope. They got to just go through all the motions. <laughs> uh, yeah. Little baby quill named after Peter Quill of uh, Star Lord of Marvel fame, which I get it that they're fans, but there is something a little odd naming your child after the infamously abandoned child <laughs> of the Marvel universe. Yeah. And, and the mom dies early it's pretty awful sick. it's a pretty but you know hey more power to them it is a cute also, name. I do like and, name. and you know dad is thinks he's a god mm. well maybe that's apropos <laughs> i don't know grow out the mullet and then we'll see <laughs> uh so yes they got a baby that's exciting uh and then we have some title changes we have Sami Zayn winning the intercontinental title defeating shinsuke nakamura on smackdown and that is now his third Intercontinental title reign. And Brock Lesnar wins the WWE Championship at the Elimination Chamber in Saudi Arabia. And now it is a winner-take-all match at WrestleMania between Roman Reigns with his Universal Championship and Brock's right. WWE Championship. So we uh, we did a... Uh, we did a little uh, a, a Patreon recording day, Scott and I, this past weekend. We did a pre-show to that day where we talked uh, a little bit about Elimination Chamber uh, at the end and those results and opinions on that. So if you're curious about that, that should be on the Patreon there. But and, and, and after this recording today, yes. Oh, oh OK. <laughs> OK. Um, but uh uh, yeah, I mean, it seems like WrestleMania is coming together in a variety of ways. Uh, I like, uh, as far as like who's got titles, obviously anything can change. Any Roman given and Brock, date. sure. Um, but I mean, like your Zane, main event, sure. But is there? I guess I'm talking about some of the titles. That you, since we're talking about title changes, I think that we are likely going to be getting some form of Johnny Knoxville comedy or Johnny Knoxville in the side of a wrestler against Sami Zayn for the intercontinental championship. Okay. Uh, you know, it's the workhorse title. It's the for really well the intercontinental title or he yeah. will just have it. I'm thinking for it, uh, whether it's against Knoxville or it's against a wrestler who Knoxville is in the corner of. Gotcha. I don't know who that could be. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of wrestlers who could probably have a lot of fun alongside Johnny Knoxville. Um, yeah, although I've been I was hearing interviews of him that he can't really do head trauma anymore. So I'm no longer, he, not that I'm against Johnny Knoxville in any way, but it's now I'm not excited for any wrestling endeavors. I Can I just say that the, <laughs> the phrase that he cannot do head trauma anymore. Can't do it. <laughs> It's, can't do it. That bull I don't fucked know. him up in number four so bad. Uh, yo, you guys, I've done too much head trauma. I've just been doing a lot of head trauma. It's really, I can't do it no more. Doctor says no more. I can't do no more head trauma. Can't do no more head trauma. <laughs> Somebody call your mama. Can't do no more head trauma. Oh, look at you. You're well, a look poet. at me. You're a poet and we all fucking know it. But so yeah, that that sires me on a little bit of uh, which is why Knoxville's in ring antics. It is why though I I could see him being just in the corner of a wrestler. I don't know who that person would be, but befriending. Be? I don't know Commander Matt, Aziz. Matt Riddle, Commander Aziz would be very. They'd funny. never make it out to the ring, just because they'd be high all the time. I don't get. They'd the, be doing goofy the, shit. Oh, sure. just like yeah, they they'd be giggling, they'd be high, they'd be having whatever. Like they they just never make it out there because it's like, nah, uh, man, don't do the match. Let's uh, hang out. Alex Pierce really wants your attention in the chat, by the way, Scott. And Nugget said something weird to me <laughs> that this that my background is fixed racism. What is this? Why? I don't know. Scott I don't does know what is going on. You got to tune into the live stream for Scott's backgrounds. They're delightful. But I'm talking more just about the fact that the last four messages from Alex Pierce have been Scott, 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 like a like it an is, annoying I, child. I don't know what to do because this is, this is becoming very distracting. Hey, while dad. Trying to hey, dad. Do the show. Hey, dad. Hey, dad. Uh. WWE Fightful, oh sorry, in WWE news, Fightful confirmed on Tuesday that AJ Styles is signing a new multi-year contract with WWE. Fightful reports 
that uh, Styles' new deal was, quote, well over $3 million a year. Wow. With Styles also having some additional bus travel accommodations paid for. So good for AJ. Get that money. When um, they're holding on to somebody, they're holding on to them. Yeah. I mean, AJ is one of those wrestlers who I think, you know, wrestling fans all. Th- I, I mentioned this with Shinsuke a couple of weeks ago where it's, oh, man, they're not utilizing him. Or like, oh, you know, it's insane to me that AJ Styles isn't the top guy in the company and stuff like that. But there's only a few spots for that role. And any point that there, they want there's two, there's always sure, two, right. two. Yeah, that's a good. Point. I guess I meant like with contendership as well. Like in any given point, maybe there's three or oh, four. There's seven then. Seven. Um, But AJ is just one of those guys who like any time that they want, they throw him in a high profile match. And it's it's they can just book it and not worry about it. So I'm not surprised that they're spending a ton of money to keep him. Yeah, um, it makes sense. And it, it sounds like he's going to be there for a while. And th- that's only a good thing. And then we have some breaking and mildly speculative news. It's just coming out. And, you know, sources are saying, like, ah, oh, it's confirmed, it's confirmed. But until it's I feel like the man says it himself. We got to just say that that's the case, but Cesaro's WWE contract has expired and reportedly he is now a free agent. According to PW insider and uh, uh, Dave Meltzer, WWE is believed to have offered Cesaro a new contract, but it was rejected. He had been on a one year extension that expired earlier this week because his deal ran out he will not have to wait for a 90 day non compete window to sign with another company or wrestle elsewhere. This is a uh, very interesting. Uh, he is, I think a favorite of many people as far as, uh, you know, a, a person who we all feel like never got to the, the highest peak of their potential and abilities. Uh, I'm not a, like everybody needs to go to a W, uh, because the reality is, is they have such a huge roster now that almost, you know, the likelihood of not getting lost is really tough, but not really. So, so, you don't think so? <laughs> no. Who Jake, who are you missing? I mean, I, it's, it's, I don't have, I don't have an answer to that. I'm not missing anybody cause I don't fucking watch, but, uh, yeah. what I'm so trying to say is like, the sheer amount there's there's just as many huge names in AW that there are in WWE is what I'm saying. Yes, but they fixed that long ago, Jake. Don't you remember? Everyone's in a faction. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, but I I mean, all I'm saying is Cesaro with the NWA title, mm, that just sounds right to me. Yeah, but then he'd have to fight Matt Cardona, and that doesn't sound right to me. Well, he'll lose it before, hopefully. <laughs> he already got it, so <laughs> there's in the time that we had watched, there were there were two champions, so they don't move quickly. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, but you know, we maybe we have to get used to calling him Claudio again. Uh, yeah, Cal- Claudio, Claudio Cast- Castagnoli, Castan Castan Leone, Castiglione. Yeah, or we'll never get used to it. Um, or or what if he just goes by Antonio? Either he just way. cuts cuts the other side of the name that WWE gave him off, or or just Claudio. We don't Claudio. know who he is, right. Claudio. I I think uh, that that would be certainly a major acquisition for AEW. I think they've been looking at their contracts. They know who's coming. They know who's going. And I yeah. feel like so far they've been filtering all that stuff out fine. Because as we'll get to, they opened up a pretty significant spot in their roster. Uh, yeah, the Claudio section. The Claudio section's coming. Mm-hmm. So if if this happens, uh, I mean, the easy guess right away is AEW Revolution, the pay-per-view coming up in right. a week and a half or so, um, that he would pop up there, right? Right, right, right. Assuming, though, that even though he doesn't have the 90-day non-complete, non-compete, that in the regular contract that expires, there isn't something written in there that is also a limited time non-compete clause where like once your ex- contract expires, regardless of how you still need to wait 30 days or something like that, that could be in there. Uh, don't you think Dave Meltzer would have said as much? 
Uh, Tim Redbeard in the chat. Antonius Caesar. I like that one. Good name. <laughs> yes, uh, the names are welcome. Brutus uh, Caesarus. That'd be a good one. Right, right, right. Yeah, hit hit us with the uh, the names for Cesaro in chat if you if you too have trouble with Claudio Castagnoli. Just wait till Anthony Scissors pops up. Yes. <laughs> oh, Swingy Sigs. Uh, some some sad news to report: former WWE, WCW, and ECW referee Mickey J passed away recently due to compl- complications from pneumonia related to COVID nineteen. Mickey was trained by Steve Kern and Mike Graham. He had refereed in uh, Florida's championship wrestling. He had wrestled as enhancement talent and uh, on WWF superstars and wrestling challenge, and then started refereeing in 92 with WCW and worked for WWE for a long amount of time and uh, was honored by California uh, cauliflower alley club with the Charlie Smith referees award in 2018. That's a bummer. I always enjoyed him. Yeah, he he's one of those people who, if you don't know his name, you know his face as a wrestling fan. Like I didn't know the name when I when someone posted about it in the Discord uh, until the photo popped up, and I went, "Oh, that guy!" Like he's, he's he looks like Pete Rose, right? A little bit. Yeah, he kind of does. You know, that's a good point. But because yeah, well, I remember seeing, uh, I think the first time I saw him as a referee in WCW, I was like. P. Rose is a special guest referee. Like, what is that? It's like, man, they really, he's really trying to find something other than baseball <laughs> these days. He's just trying to get away from Kane is really what's happening. But yeah, he was, he was, he was great. Like he's, I know we've always, uh, we, we chatted about doing this in the past, uh, doing like a referee episode, just talking right. about referees and sort of, sort of the art of it and who's great and who's not so great. And he's just one of those that's always super solid. That you notice him a little bit, right? But he's never blatantly not distracting on the spotlight or yeah. anything like that, and keeps the energy going in all the right places. So he will be missed. Uh, Ring of Honor's inaugural Hall of Fame class has now been fully unveiled. CM Punk will be inducted into the ROH Hall of Fame as the final member of the class, which also includes the Briscoes, Brian Danielson, and Samoa Joe. Uh, fitting class for the first. I like that. Uh, they all feel like people still, uh, in with a career ahead of them. Uh, and considering that Ring of Honor doesn't have a ton of talent that were old, legacy kind of characters and wrestlers. Uh, this makes sense. Do you yeah, think- it's a little top heavy, but I get it. Yeah, you're not wrong as far as like who they're gonna do next year. <laughs> <laughs> who's left yeah, you, but yeah, no, I get you it. know you want to have the availability of someone because i don't know what one of the names that immediately popped in my head which i'm sure a fair amount of people will go oh why them i i think of james gibson like that's where i right. got to right. see jamie noble for the first time i was really taken with him right there yeah and- there's going to be a lot i think of people who are current wwe talent that WWE's not going to let be a part of that um kevin steen for example people who are Power likely black. were yeah well yeah yeah who are worthy of it but it's just simply not gonna not gonna happen but I I mean do, do you think that this is gonna be a, a a broadcasted event I'm sure in some, some way you know whether YouTube or something like that you you got to do something but I don't know maybe they I can see somebody like Samoa Joe going man the second I show up there. And I'm gonna be there with Danielson and Punk. I'm I'm just not gonna hear the end of it, you know. Right, right. Like if there's any semblance of crowd there, it's just gonna be hijacked by Go to AW Wrestle Everybody. It's like right. I'm at an ROH thing right now. Can right. we focus on this? So either way. We we've talked previously about what we would like the WWE Hall of Fame to be. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe it isn't. There's no fans. And it's just like, no, here's just some personnel, some wrestlers, some indie wrestlers who come to honor these guys. And yeah. Yeah. I think that'd be cool. If, if ROH can pull that off and be able to showcase it for everybody, I think that'd be great. No women in the Hall of Fame. Oh, no, real class. Just going to put that out there. Uh, unless you think that Briscoes are a couple of bitches. Which I don't. Uh, right. They're badasses and they scare the shit out of me, so I wouldn't say say. that. Jake, 
<laughs> Jake clearly thought that, right? not me. Go after him. I look like J- a Briscoe. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting there. Just get rid of a tooth or two. It's not going to be that long, I'm sure. John Cena's Peacemaker series is returning to HBO Max for a second season. Ahead of the show's season one finale, Cena and series creator James Gunn announced that the Peacemaker has officially been picked up for season two, and Gunn will direct and write all of the season two episodes. This is this is possibly the best news. It's good news. Uh, the season one finale also was a record setter for an any uh, Max original, any HBO Max original. Oh, fuck the- you and just like that. <laughs> It was also, I, I think I read the stat that it was up like 60% or some crazy number from its its uh, pilot episode. So they doubled how many people watched the, the pilot by the time the, the finale came out. TikTok trend too, right? That everybody's doing the, oh, when you first start watching Peacemaker right. and everybody's just sort of sitting there. And then they do the dance. The ju- judging like, I don't know if I'm going to like this. And right. then, yeah, then they end up knowing the whole dance. I'm halfway through. I haven't been able to catch up yet. I fucking love it. It's so good. Yeah. It's uh, one of the best things involving a wrestler that I've seen. With the exception of uh, John Cena putting his foot in his mouth on Twitter today. Uh, oh. uh, again, about things that are occurring in the world and in world news. He tweeted and, and it's I get it. Like, I understand what he was trying to say, but it was just the optics were not good. It was just not intelligent. He wrote like. If ever there was a time that I wish that I could summon a real life peacemaker. And That's it was, fine. Yeah, I don't know. It's a little, it's a little, a little off the mark. But Is we it? Get it. People it's were just John like, Cena. People are <laughs> talking about his show and wanting the world to be a better place. I think it's fine. I don't hold him like, mm, I don't know, John. The entire world is relying on you for a viable tweet in this moment. Hey, if you feel shitty, go watch my show. <laughs> that could have also worked. That would have been a little bit better. Yes. Hashtag peacemaker. <laughs> hashtag peacemaker. Hashtag oops. Economics. Whoopsies. Um, and speaking of other media here, uh, WWE and Bloomhouse Media are working on a documentary about controversial wrestler Teddy Hart. Is it the doc- bl- is it Bloomhouse or Blumhouse? I've always said Blum. I believe it's Bloom because I think it's Jason Bloom is what That's, they've always said his name is. I don't, I, I've never heard him uh, referred to as Jason Blum. Okay. That's Cause fair. I feel like he has to be very British and old with like heavy jowls to be. Blum. I Jason am so Blum. Blum. Uh, let me present to you my f- horror films. Which quite scary. You see, for the, the murderer comes out with some sort of accident. You, he has a, everyone he has a, runs away. He has a pipe that's always in one sort of his mouth, so he has like a, a, a sort of Popeye to the side. Yeah, and he tweets for John Cena, which is really inappropriate. It's very, very bizarre. So yeah, they're gonna they're, they're working on a Teddy Hart documentary that's scheduled to release for December. Uh, I imagine Teddy Hart's not going to be a part of it. So right. This is pretty unprecedented with the exception of the self-destruction of Ultimate Warrior, uh, where it's like, well, Warrior wasn't a part of that one either. And we saw what WWE did. Right. And granted, I think it was earned. Um, but Teddy Hart, it's so strange that they're going to make a documentary about him. Yeah. Uh, and this is, you said that uh, it's a, part of the bloom house um but it also states that this is working in conjunction with wwe did you mention that yes did i missed that oh, okay sorry i don't know if i missed and that that's what right. i was just bringing up right, right then got it yeah um yeah that's a little odd right it's a little odd <laughs> yeah it's you can do documentaries about so many other people that have worked for you or work for you you had jimmy wang yang do a documentary uh, on Jim Wang Yang. Come on. We should make that documentary. We should. And unlike WWE's, he would probably be in ours. <laughs> They'd be like, we don't, probably, need, we don't need to interview probably him. Would. Yeah, we, it, he, he'll totally be on board. Um, And, you know, hey, I said we had good news before, but God damn it. Here's some great news, everybody. Ahead of next month's release of the new WWE 2K22 video game, it was announced on Wednesday that musician and former Raw guest 
Machine Gun Kelly executive produced a soundtrack for the game, but that's not all. Machine Gun Kelly will be available as a character after the March 2022 launch as part of a DLC expansion. But the date's not yet announced, and it's not known if he will be free or paid additional content. I mean, is getting to chokeslam him or or AA him off of a a ramp enough to get you to buy this game? (laughs) Is How many out that wrestlers fantasy? have been deleted from <laughs> right, this game? Right. I how mean, many, there's... <laughs> how many legends did they go? Eh, I don't know. I think, I think it'd be inappropriate if we put them in the game right now. And they're like, right. all right, fine, cut them out of there. What do we? Should we put in a replacement? Machine Gun Kelly, <laughs> Corey Graves? No, Machine Gun Kelly. Uh, okay. I mean, there's there's something to putting in a character that is divisive that's kind of nice because for the people who were like i don't care about machine kelly oh you know what i'm gonna create a character and then beat him up digitally it's kind of fun i think they should put more divisive awful people into wrestling video games he has to be free though you can't charge people for a divisive non-wrestling character. He might be, maybe he'll be part of a DLC with other wrestlers that people actually want. So it's like, oh, I got the one and the Machine Gun Kelly's also there. Oh, that's horrible. Because then people will start going, look, can I pay for each of them individually, even if I'm paying for more than the actual pack together, but I don't want him. Yeah. Like, that would be me if I had any interest in buying give this game. Me, give me a slight refund of whatever the <laughs> different, whatever you value MGK at. No, but they go like, I'll pay more if you can separate them. Okay. All right. Just take him out of the equation. Uh, Andrew Baylor says, at least it isn't uh, Logan or Jake Paul. Give it time, Yet. Andrea. <laughs> Give it time. Yeah. That might, may, hey, maybe that's the whole pack. Now, if Johnny Knoxville was in it, though? I want I want the rest of the crew who showed up with at the Rumble. Right. I don't want true. just Knoxville. I want uh, but also as well. But also Steve-O without COVID, preferably. Does Steve-O have COVID? Did you not did you not hear about that? He was he showed up at WrestleMania, tested positive for COVID. Oh yeah. And then and wasn't then it that's why he wasn't able to come out with them, even Rumble. though he was Oh, Royal Rumble. I'm sorry, not Mania. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's a shame. He's he's doing live shows and stuff all the time, and he was excited to be there. I know, it was a bummer because he didn't get to walk out. Uh Jeff Hardy breaks his own news saying he is AEW bound. Quote, I'm going to AEW, Hardy said, as he was interviewed by Jared Myers during a meet and greet in Louisville, Kentucky on February 19th. And it has been out there like he's. This has been said and he's not denying it. So, I I mean, it aligns with what everybody was thinking. Right. I was I was just watching. His uh, his broken skull sessions before we started recording and he has a line in there saying, I haven't done many of the house shows the the live events recently i've only done a couple i hope to do more soon right the ultimate downfall of yeah i mean nothing on him it's right, all course, wwe's fucking fault yeah. of they they accuse him they say he's right. uh, you know messed up and then drug test happens weeks later and then they get the results and they're like oh hey you want to come be in the hall of fame Turns out you didn't do anything wrong at all, and you're trying to tell us something was wrong. Yeah, I I told you that 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 is a really kind of uncomfortable episode of Broken Skull now because of what we know and how he seems to be like, yeah, this is my shot and I'm excited. I'm here. And like he's then he just did everything right for the most part. And in that, you can sense this for the most part for the all part for the all part. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, But like. In that interview, you can sense that he had, he like there was some guilt weighing on him, and it was all him being like, "I can't screw this up." And then to know where it went, being like, "Yeah, fucking, you didn't. They they screwed it up for you." Yeah, so they, fucking heartbreaking. They accused you and everything. And oh. Seth one was funny too because I was watching that last night while doing some work stuff. And <laughs> Seth's transition of everything is, yeah, I was waiting around and I didn't know what was going on and. <laughs> No one's calling me. No one's telling me what's happening. And I show up and then they tell me like four minutes before it happens. That happens every single 
monumental Everyone, yeah. yep. moment in his career. Yeah. Like I didn't know no one else told me and I was I was I was getting antsy. Show up and then cool. they say they sounds, say we're doing we're doing this. Sounds really fun to work there. <laughs> That's the talent to go. What's fucking happening? Um let's see here. What else we got? Oh, uh the first inductee is not Jeff Hardy into the WWE Hall of Fame, but it is the Undertaker. He will be part of this year's ceremony at WrestleMania 38 in Dallas, Texas. The ceremony will air live on Peacock and WWE Network after SmackDown on Friday, April 1st. For the first time, they will hold the event on the same night as SmackDown as a doubleheader for fans. Yeah, I mean, it's impossible to argue (laughs) the deservedness of this. Arguably, like, the biggest Hall of Fame entry of all time, probably. Uh, And... Uh, I am happy that he's going to get to walk out and uh, have a crowd around him. A because, SmackDown crowd. Sure, but there's still, and it's still, it's not a bunch of screens <laughs> like his farewell in the Thunderdome. Like, give him a, especially because it'll also, they always do the thing at Mania where it's like, and here were the people who were inducted into the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. He'll get that moment. And at least he'll be able to have a farewell that is for people and that he will get to hear the reaction and not just a silent so eight seconds. Like, hey, there he is. Go. Yeah. Yay. Eight seconds. Then, you think, you think they're not going to give him his whole ass entrance at mania just to bow and then leave again. I think a whole, whole entrance. No, they're going to give him the whole entrance. No, you don't think so. I want to know what he wears for the hall of fame. Oh, don't God. like, don't wear the duster and the hat and all that. Like, no, I don't think he'll, I think wear he'll, some like, biker tuxedo would be cool i think it wasn't didn't jake wear like a leather snakeskin tie and like you know like and i think jacket he's, that's yeah a little bizarre i think he's just gonna be a, yeah biker biker dress biker fancy what, chic yeah biker chic. there it is that's what i'm hoping for yeah but i'm hoping this isn't one of those that's you know gutted for time like the austin year where it's right hey right. we only have an hour and so you have to speak as quick as possible share no stories whatsoever and then right. you're just out well i mean considering what last year's was who knows who knows if it's even going to be a legitimate uh you know a uh, presentation mm-hmm. uh the way that we've come to to know them and i think it was booker t made news for saying like that should be it was it booker t or was it bully ray somebody no it was fucking idiot bully ray of yeah, course bully ray, right somebody just said like that's it like don't make we don't need anybody else in the Hall of Fame. Like, make the whole thing about Taker. I mean, it no. <laughs> it would be a huge slap in the face to all the other people who are very deserving. But for the sake of a television presentation, fine. I'm fine with that. <laughs> sure, who cares? An hour of him yammering yeah, on? Maybe. Well, no. no, no, no. But like of the of people talking about him. But in that case, yeah, we've we had the last ride. We've already gotten eight hours of it or whatever. We had Piper and Hogan go in on the same year, right? Yeah, like, sure, it's. As as much as I enjoy Taker, he's not the end all be all. We've no. had others before, like Andre sure. had passed and he went in, but there's there's others that have been the gigantic pillars of professional wrestling. And I agree, yeah, I agree. to just go like no, him and only him. Now don't overload it for sure. I think right. these that year that Hogan and Piper went in was a a too big anyway of a class, right? That it should probably be between like four to five, depending on tag teams or, or a faction right. or something yeah, like that. Sure. But you know. Enough that there's some variety and you go, hey, great. They were honored. Right, right. You get to hear from him. Who do you think uh, inducts him if they're even doing that this year? And if it's not just like, you know, uh, Corey Graves doing everybody or that sort of thing. I my my go to guess would be Kane. Yeah. Who do you think? I I mean, I I think it will be Kane. I would love it if it was somebody like Vince, you know, Um, Mm -hmm. Uh, or somebody who we know is a good friend of his behind the scenes that, uh, you know, like maybe more honest with his or hers, uh, induction speech than just oh, like, like yeah. he's a real piece of shit. Everybody <laughs> just so you know. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I always, I always screw up the name, the bone street crew, the bone something. Yeah. Bone street crew. Bone street crew. Yeah. So, you know, maybe one, 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 one of them, Vega? one of them. Savio Vega should do it. Oh, come on. When was the last time? You know you would love to see Savio Vega all in a suit. He was at his farewell. <laughs> oh, gosh. 
Uh, judging by the reaction of his farewell, it should be Shane O'Mac what? because he got so many crazy good chants. <laughs> or what if it's Brock Lesnar? <laughs> Could you imagine? That'd that would make sense. I would love if to watch Brock Lesnar induct somebody. That'd be awesome. Just drinking a beer while doing it. Uh, and then, hey, Jake, I don't know if you know this, but let's remind you about how wrestlers are terrible people. Who do you I've never not want to hear I've never about heard this a, concept before? Who do you not want to hear about being an awful, awful person, Jake? Who do I not want to hear? So you're asking me which wrestler do I like so much that I would like to, uh, yeah, to keep keep pure and precious. Yeah. Um, who do I like that I hope isn't awful, um, or even more awful, perhaps? If you're like, awful. I know they're a little awful, but right. it's tolerable awful. Um, Edge. I don't. I hope Edge isn't awful. <laughs> no, I mean. <laughs> There, there was a little thing with Lita and, yeah. and Matt Hardy, but awful da, da, today, da, 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 da. awful today, <laughs> awful, Ooh. awfully revealed today. Oh boy. Um, I don't know. It's not has Edge. Brian, though. Has Brian Kendrick been in the news lately? <laughs> mm. He's he no, he's consistent. Alrighty, I I I, I don't know. Tell me, just 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 rip the bandit off. Well, let me tell you a little story that was shared on Renee Paquette's podcast from former AEW tag team champion Dax Harwood, opening up about his past struggles with both anxiety and bulimia. Uh, he tells a story about how Shawn Michaels made an odd decision at WWE Raw 25 after a heart conversation between the two. Both he and Cash Wheeler were set to get a beatdown from DX and Balor Club at 2018's WWE Raw 25 after a match with Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson, and that he had had some hesitations about it and how it would make the then revival look. He said he was catching up with Michaels backstage from their days together at the Performance Center, talking about the issues he and Wheeler had recently gone through with injuries and that he had personally been in a dark place, but that his wife helped him pull through. Harwood said Michaels, who had praised the two men at the PC, opened up to him and said he had a similar story with his wife also getting him through his own rough patches. Harwood said it was a real bonding moment. And then later, when Michaels was with the rest of DX in the back with a revival, he began making fun of Hardwood's biceps injuries and other issues, seemingly out of nowhere. He said when the segment was done, only one DX member said thanks to the team and was cool with them. Sean X. Pac Waltman. Quote, Everyone else was so cold and treated us like we were shit on the bottom of their shoes, he said, adding that he will never forget that feeling. He would like to have a conversation with Michaels about it someday. So, I this is an instance where I bet you that the first conversation, Sean was being earnest and honest. And they did have a moment. And uh-huh. then Sean got in front of the that friend who he never should have been hanging out with, who's a really bad influence, who turns him into an asshole, <laughs> Triple H. And all of a sudden, the bullies are back. And he like, he uh, what do they call it? Regressionism. He regressed to a former version of himself, a less emotionally enlightened version of himself. Where they were like, let's pick on this guy. So Triple H caused all this behavior of Shawn Michaels? Uh, yeah, that's I'm blaming Triple H for it. No, Shawn Michaels is responsible for his own actions. I'm just saying he's one of those people who, depending on who he's around, becomes an asshole probably. And I bet I you Triple you mean H more of an asshole because Shawn more of an, was more, more, quite more. an asshole previous to knowing Triple H. Yeah, more, more of an asshole. So that's fun. Huh? Uh, it's 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 not an industry that draws the best people to it, especially 50 years ago. That's strange, though, because there's a Ultimate Warrior Award that does just that. <laughs> they honor those people. We the fact that we are right, the fact that the Ultimate Warrior has a, an award named after him is everything you need to know about the moral bar established for pro wrestling as an industry. And that's almost rainbow colored as it is, which in and of itself is like, mm, 
I don't think he likes these colors all together like this, especially if you put on a flag. Oh, I can't. I can't. I can't deal with it. No, nah, neither can I. I think Dana Warrior still works there. But our big story this week, uh, our our gigantic story. This is I, I've been talking about this with friends all week um, and, and, the, and the many different aspects of it. Let's just get to it. Cody and Brandy Rhodes leave AEW after contract negotiations um, that had spilled out on air even uh, during AEW uh, uh, television. Um, Cody was seemingly uh, like a month or so ago had been uh, doing like a handshake deal or just a, a slight extension because that's why the TNT title debacle was going on in the way that it did. Um, because they're still trying to reach, uh, an agreement and there's stories about, uh, that his booking, uh, privileges had, were being revoked. Even though stories are coming around that it's like, yeah, that he, it's like you have say in what you do, but ultimately Tony Khan is still booking and writing these shows. And the other stories are going around that it's roughly $5 million that he's been offered per year over at WWE. So he 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 gone. He wanted punk money, from what we're told, mm-hmm. from from uh, AEW, and wasn't seen as a uh, punk valuable. And so why wouldn't WWE just be like, all right, take take this thing and come back over here? I mean, this is this is a really like, it's, I, I'm not gonna say that it's shocking. But it's, oh, it's I think fascinating. So. Really? You think it's... I don't, I don't know that it's shocking as much. I'd say it's shocking because it's a founder of AEW. It's one yeah. of the... It's one of the... It's the face of AEW, truly, in the beginning. Yeah, 100%. This was the guy, you know, while a lot of people, it's Jericho. While he's not a founder, he's he's sure. the big name of the group, right? He, he's he is the, the... They got Jericho. He's that guy. Yes. Yeah. So Co- for casual but it was also fans... Cody got him. Yeah, it's for casual fans, for anybody who's who's not fully aware of who these guys are. Maybe they know Rhodes by name, but they're like, oh, he has another kid? Okay. But Jericho right, right. was that guy. And Tony Khan is a known money entity, but he was, certainly wasn't on camera at the time. No. And he wasn't vocal at the time. Thank God. What a beautiful time that was. And But, <laughs> but Omega is the introduction to the U.S. in a larger scale. So we've heard right. about him, but... Not so much the mouthpiece and the young bucks, everyone knows to a degree, but Cody is that face. He's the guy going out there before and after the show is the ones talking to everybody. And then Brandy's with him. Like he is, he's, he is the big personality of it. So he's, he's also the one with the story because as mm-hmm. much as one could argue that Omega and the bucks also have great stories, Cody is like wrestling royalty, right? Has the lineage had this, you know, a pretty, uh, I don't know what the right word is, uh, tumultuous, uh, career in WWE where he played a variety of different characters and did whatever they asked him to do with, with a smile on his face, even when he didn't like it. And, and, and he was vocal about it when he left, it was sort of a like underdog, like, yeah, you stick it to them. Go well, do and, what you and do. telling the part of the story too, of they said that I could never be anything beyond yeah this and i'm lucky to be stardust and i could you know right barely do that it's it's he's he's not outing the names but he's saying like this is what they told me and exactly. i know i can do more i'm gonna write a list of people and i'm gonna wrestle these people and everybody's like yeah fuck yeah i do it right i'm gonna start a show and they made a show and then that's like the pitch right, right. for they did did uh all in and the, and that, it, it wasn't that even just in response to somebody saying like oh it's not like anybody, any uh, anybody else can fill a well, hundred thousand th- seat theater or whatever the fuck the number was. Like, and you know, like Cody 20, was, yeah, Cody was like, well, I could, yeah, me and the <laughs> like, Bucks could totally, yeah, 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 yeah. And so I do really feel like he, the spark or the seed that grew into AEW is Cody Rhodes. Yes, it's so people try and diminish the idea of well, he wasn't actually running the show; he right, was doing right. this that. Ultimately, he's still doing way more than what a wrestler just shows up, puts on the gear, gets told what's happening. They go do the thing and then they go home. We see him wearing the headsets. We see him 
producing and orchestrating parts of the show, he's doing more than any wrestler does. Right. So if he's truly not an EVP in every single form of that title, he's still doing a lot and he still made this show happen, made the brand yeah. happen, made the show happen. He's a part of that. He, I mean, look at it this way. He was big enough to make a public kayfabe story of him not challenging for the title. That's yeah. like, that's all you need to know. Like, why would that be the case if he wasn't in the position of power that he really truly was? So what's shocking to me is while only three years old, this company, it's the, a, a founding member a yeah. is gone. They bought sure. him out. He I, wasn't happy with what happened and he left this, what is a job for life essentially like as long right. as you go yeah we'll figure out a way to make this work it's his it's right. it's a part right. of his and he could have some position where it's like i'm not going to wrestle anymore i don't need to produce it but I'll, I'll i'll do this for you and brandy will do good ambassadorship or shit like that like they could find a way that right. this is just forever theirs he's forever profiting and involved in this but he said no yeah and left and wwe went well, then we'll buy him. We've been holding on to this money. Right. So we'll make a big acquisition. We took one of your pillars. And another thing that I do think is fascinating about this, and I don't know if there's, I don't know how it really works. None of us fucking do. This is all speculative bullshit. But there is something to be said about the fact that now WWE has somebody in the ranks who is familiar with the inner workings of AEW who now knows whose contracts are expiring when and who who they're looking at. Yeah. And who's happy and not happy and who wants to do what if, if, you know, WWE is looking to fill a role as they sometimes do where they, sometimes they find a wrestler to fit a thing that they've created versus create something for a wrestler. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, those stories come up and something gets pitched and they say, we should do something like this. Cody is now an asset outside of just a talented wrestler. He is somebody who has insight into the competition and whether or not he's legally allowed to share some of that information. I'm sure there's tons of NDAs and that kind of stuff, but uh, at the end of the day, yeah, great point. Great point. At the end of the day, it's fucking, that's more work and more contracts to have somebody (laughs) write up and do. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's huge. I guess the reason why I'm not quote shocked by it, is just because of what you and I've talked about. And that is like, eventually everybody goes to a different place. Um, yeah. But not ones that yeah. make a place. Yeah. You, you know what? You're, you're not wrong about that. You're not wrong. That's um, why, that's why everybody else on the roster is like, okay, it might be shocking. Cause it's like, Oh, I thought it was going so good. Or why right. would you want to leave what I perceive to be good? Because I'm only watching the TV show, the bucks, Omega and Cody and right. you know, Brandy are all, holy shit, if any of them left, right. this is wild because it's it's still theirs. They could right. figure out some way that they don't have as much power as, as we perceive them to have. The As Tony Khan keeps putting it in all these things, like, I'm great to work for. Everybody loves me. Everybody wants to work for me. Right. They look, they're leaving over there. Uh, somebody left you. Right. and <laughs> You and didn't there, make yeah. it work together. There's also the optics of AEW at its inception, really trying to brand themselves as the fun new thing over there. That's tired. It's the same nonsense. They're going to hold you it's, down. They're not going to listen yeah, to you. This is the young new thing. And WWE now has the young new thing where they are. And it's really the first time that that's happened. Um, So that's really interesting to me and how, how they handle the situation. I'm interested to see. If WWE, just because in the modern era, they've been more like, it, you know, the, the the forbidden door is the conversation that keeps coming up. And the, the phrase we had Mickey James impact women's or knockouts champion with her belt appearing on TV, you know, like if Cody comes, does he just say, like, I left AEW? Like, do we do we make that part of the storyline in some capacity? Um, I don't know. I would I would be. uh I would be capitalizing on that in every capacity on camera and kayfabe. 
I feel like it doesn't hurt them in any way to mention the other thing. I I I, I feel know. like I feel like if you, well, I'm agreeing with you. Is what right, I'm saying. Like right, right, I, right. I I feel like the the outlet overall where you for sure do it, no question, is you immediately. It's got to be before WrestleMania. Right. You do Broken Skull sessions with Cody Rhodes. Right. Like for right. Austin to sit down with Cody. And that be the one where, you know, we had Jericho on there, which was cool and right. shocking because it's like, oh, shit, he didn't work there. And we get a smidge of AEW. In large part, it's stories that Jericho's told in the past and tells again. And yeah, but Cody would tell a lot of stories that we wouldn't have heard um, in, uh, in the in the large audience. And then a large chunk of it's going to be. So you were there. You started right. up another company, AEW. It's going right now. We had Jericho on the show, but you're here now. What happened? Right. And they and, talk about yeah. it. And that would be that'd be the outlet. Like that's the place where you get a large part of that story out. Yeah, especially because if you think about how many I mean, for a while it was almost a a a, a running joke of somebody gets fired from or leaves WWE and we all go, can't wait for his talk is Jericho episode. Where we're always mm-hmm. like, I want to hear the dirt. I can't wait to hear Bray talk about it or or Dean Ambrose or whoever. We always yeah. say that now it's just like, I can't wait to, you know, is she, is he going to sit down with Renee and talk about it on her talk or her conversation on her conversational right. podcast and like be honest about it and whatnot. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm really excited to see where it goes raw. Uh, I, I, did you I, watch Raw after I, hearing this news? I didn't watch it, not out of a lack of interest, because I mm-hmm. was really interested if he might pop up. Uh, we also don't know if he has some sort of non-compete clause, like we were talking about earlier, where even though it expired, it might be a, it might be something as small as a 30-day thing. Um, but We certainly don't know if AEW has that overall, because right, sure. there haven't been many uh, releases or contract expirings. Right. Um, so and they have it's such a just good not relationship. really been made public. Yeah, they have such a good relationship with so many other companies as well. Yeah, but. they seem to be, tr- you know, fairly heavily enforcing right. the. No, you're an independent contractor. You can go do your thing. Right, right, right. Um, but uh, 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 what I was saying was on Raw, they uh, uh were dropping a lot of hints to him, which I think is really smart. I noticed on Twitter, whoever was running the Raw Twitter account or WWE's Twitter account, was having a very good time. Was it John Cena? <laughs> Probably. Um, or no, it was uh, somebody tweeting as John Cena. I forget who we were talking about earlier. <laughs> I, I, I couldn't call back the bit. But um, they were toying with it. They were writing lots of little nods like, oh, it's not smoke and mirrors. You're actually seeing blah, blah, blah in the ring. Like Little things like that, which were really mm-hmm. fun. And, and I enjoy that. Um now, I do want to address this because somebody mentioned it in the chat. Andrew Beeler says um, there are rumors circulating that it's all a work and that he's going to come back as a heel in some sort of heel faction in AEW. Of course, what? nothing. All rumors now. And then Dean Ambrose joins the shield again and says, I was never gone, guys. Oh, I told Jake was right the whole time. Um, but I uh, uh, he was seen in Orlando like at the performance center, essentially. So like he's clearly showing up for work. You going to go inside? Yep, cuz I work here. Right. Now Okay, you can move along. Here here's another Go inside then. I do I do. I work here. No problem. <laughs> Tony, um, they're not buying it. I I will say this though. You'll still you'll still get that storyline in AW when Cody inevitably ends up back there. He is going to be the biggest heel in the company for having left in the first place and gone to WWE. You're never going to hear a word he says. You're going <laughs> to, I know it's going to be speakers incredible. can't be loud enough. They're going right. to have to just transcribe what he says on the screens because we're just going to fucking boo the ever loving shit out of him. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. Um, uh, uh, I, I was lost my train of thought because I was looking at the thing here, but I wanted to address one other thing about, uh, uh, oh yeah, 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 about him being in Orlando is mm-hmm. NXT 2.0, colorful, uh, you know, color blast NXT. Yeah. Uh, Gushers NXT. <laughs> what was that? What was that? Uh, they, art that you do at the mall and you like put a t-shirt down and then you spin it. And then spin it, art. A little bit oh, called spin, spin art. art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, NXT spin sort of. art as well. That also NXT, works. I love Gushers. That. I love that. Um, they uh, just started the Women's Dusty Cup. So I also wouldn't be surprised. I would assume it would be after he debuts or returns to regular WWE television. But I wouldn't be surprised if it's like, hey, Dustin Rhodes' son here to present the winner with it or something like that, where it's like, hey, WWE's being like, we finally have a guy from the, <laughs> that we named we, this we thing We have a Rhodes is, is again. <laughs> a real life Rhodes is. I don't know. If they are paying him millions of dollars, right. I can't imagine that he's not at Vince's every beck and call. Right. That this, uh, uh, this, there's another fun question in the chat. Uh, do you think he comes out to his old Smoke and Mirrors song? Or does he come out to his new song? Does WWE just buy that song and get the rights to it? I think he... I, I, I imagine he has a few things where he's like, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want right. this. One of those things being, I want more media opportunities. Like, I want to be right. on... Because clearly he does. He wants to be famous. He wants to have right. shows. So, Rose to the Top is probably long gone. Right. I don't imagine there's another version of it coming out through WWE. So, I, I imagine he wants some film or to you know some usa shows something like that like so right. so that's in the cards right i imagine yes by my song i like my song my song works for me people know the song people relate the song that's it like it's not expensive right 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 do you know the name of that band nope exactly i don't either i i like the song not when it's played live but I like that song. Right. They might oh, cut the the preamble and all that. Like right, the right, right. no, yeah, they the don't give a shit that, about that. They the, never that they still never figured out how to blend appropriately. That drives me crazy. Well, and also the there's one more yeah. than one wrestling. No, no one cares. Just right. do the guitar riff. Yeah. So I could see that because that's a bit of the older punk thing, or it's right, a it's a right. simple thing to add on to add to. We got. The guy from AEW. So let's not change the packaging too much. I could also see, though, because uh, WWE being WWE and maybe Cody also wanting to evolve in the next step is to them create something new, which yes. maybe maybe is inspired by the new song, but throwing in a smoke and mirrors reference in some way, which, by the way, that song was fucking awesome. I loved his theme song. It is good, but I don't think people I think, forever hold that to him. Sure. Like, I know him from Smoke and Mirrors. I I I will say that WWE 2K13 maybe or one of the, the last 2K games that I played. Oh boy, that song came up a lot in that fucking menu. It did ruin it for me a little bit. Um uh, And but, the Stardust theme is arguably even better. Sure, sure, sure. Um but yeah, I don't know. Uh, it's all very, very interesting. You know who I feel the most bad for? Poor Brandy. That would have no interest. That that's see, that's the part where if so, when he's coming in, I don't think he's gonna be a, a good guy. I don't, I don't think even the, the intention might be like he's a good guy. Look at him. He's he's yay. We got him. He's back. He's Rhodes. Anything like that? It's like nope. They're gonna boo him. He he will easily get booed if he's not being booed. Brandy and him, when they are a heel couple, they're outstanding. Yeah. They're great. Like, she can add to that. She can be obnoxious. I think the duo of them is great. Inevitably, it feels like, I mean, we should ask this question of ourselves, too, of, so obviously they're bringing him in for WrestleMania. That's, that's right. you know, they have to sell 200,000 tickets, and they're not at all with their promotions. And uh, I've, I've only, in fairness... I think they're probably fine because I've only gotten 20 emails about deals they're doing. Yeah. You know, not, not a lot. So it's to make up for fine. all the previous WrestleManias when they had zero deals. Yeah. With the exception of like travel packages, your tickets are still going to be full price, but we'll give you a little cheaper hotel stay. Right. And that's fine. It was a hot ticket before. It's currently not a hot ticket. So they're trying to do stuff to make it a hot ticket. Totally yeah. understandable. So, Cody, his WrestleMania opponent, what do you do? Who do you have it be? Well, people are off the table. Reigns, Roman. Uh, That's the same person. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, meant, I meant Brock and Roman. Um, maybe he's the person that Johnny Knoxville calls up to come face 
uh, Sammy for the Intercontinental title, and he turns it back to the white belt again. <laughs> oh. like, we just got we just got rid of this. Um, like him being like, "That's my title. I'm I'll fucking, fix this. I'm the most iconic Intercontinental Champion of all time." Um, yeah, I don't know. I do feel like it kind of has to be somebody at a pretty high profile. Um, it, it seems like maybe we're getting KO and Stone Cold Steve Austin question mark. Uh, is a is a part of the rumor mill? Yeah, um, I mean they're they're, they're Alex, definitely for that stuff. Alex Pierce, <laughs> Alex Pierce in the chat says Cesaro. <laughs> Great idea. Um, Anthony, while you're thinking, I'll interrupt. Anthony, you're thinking Anthony Scissors, you. Tony Scissors. Uh, yeah, no, go ahead. Throw out who you think. <laughs> the the one that makes the most sense to me. That's the easiest. Um, I think on paper, right. there's there's not any invention. It's something that everyone who's who's watched for a fair amount of time goes like, oh, there is shit there. Cody Rhodes and Randy Orton. Orton, I think, is yeah probably the next name that I would come up with just because legacy. Legacy is yeah. a huge part of it. It's um, the, the faction that they were in, as well as Orton has some connections with like you know, uh, a cash and Wheeler, da- Dax and Hardwood, right, right. whatever the fucking names are. Whenever I read more than one, I go, Oh, I lost them. They're all gone. They're all mush mouth. So there's the connections there. Randy could have gone at a certain time right. when this was all starting. And there's rumors of that. And he was posting photos and stuff probably for negotiation tactics, but there's that there's a connection with triple H that Cody has issues with triple H triple H could be in Man. Orton's corner. And he could be that it's like, oh, you, you and your evolution guys, and you didn't ever want anyone else to come up past you and you yeah. triple H, you didn't want Orton to come up past you. And I did my own thing and I'm coming back to show you blah, blah, blah. Like there's, there's a lot there with triple H that you could have him be in a wheelchair or whatever and going right. like, ah, don't move too fast. Right. But he doesn't I, need I, to be active. I do think that triple H is the, the top of the feud list for him. Um, pending Triple H's health. I don't know whether that's this mania, but if they decide to tell a long story or SummerSlam, maybe in six months, I like I think it's a no go, but yeah. Um, I just feel like literally <laughs> he started the other company by blatantly destroying the iconic imagery of Triple H. Like it's such an obvious story. Mm -hmm. um that i think that has to be something like that has to be a part of it but you might be right in that if triple h is just you know not long to wrestle again then yeah even if he's with the guy if it's you you had your time you did this and now now you can't do it anymore now you have to look at someone younger that has to stop me because you couldn't do it yeah and and i do feel like it it has to be somebody that is a pillar it can't just be a good match. Like there's plenty of people who I would be like thrilled to have him watch wrestle that are employed yeah. by the company. There's tons of great names there, but for it to be like a WrestleMania return match for Cody Rhodes, it, it needs to be the, the shots only- fired. This yeah. is the w- guy from the other w- place. Hall of Famer, the undertaker, obviously that's yeah. going to be who <laughs> And to that point, there's there's guys like Edge or there's guys like Seth Rollins where these are all going to be great matches and fine, yeah. but these all come with invention. These all right. come with... We need to tell a story. We, uh, did something happened and I popped yep. your tire. Ha <laughs> ha. And I'm like, what? What, 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 what? what? This came out of nowhere. Right. Let's go with the guy that we know will be an immediate draw you in. We know there's some stories, but we don't know all the stories. And you can invent with that, but as long as we start to believe that there's some truth to it, you can add all the shit you want. Like with the Drew McIntyre, Randy Orton stuff during the pandemic, right? Like right. when Drew's coming at Randy going, you never helped guys when I right. came back and I didn't want to be you. We can believe it because of all the stories we've heard about Orton. <laughs> sure, it might be sure, totally sure. false, right. but it was believable enough and they right. had crossed paths in that time. The, the lines were blurred just enough for us to go like, I think that might be a real thing. I think he might be speaking from the heart here. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think Orton is that. And also they'll be fucking great together. Um, Is there any way I don't, God, I hope this is the case, but because of the triple H connection, like you said, and it's just him and HBK that it's like triple H won't isn't clear to wrestle. 
But, you know, you're Mr. WrestleMania. You're the greatest of all time, blah, blah, blah. And then we get HBK back for yet another match. Well, they are talking to him for sure, but I can't imagine that it'd be Cody. And then he would call up fucking Dax and go, hey, I got him in a room. Yeah. You're on speaker. You tell him, buddy. (laughs) If you really hurt me. And then it's just like a really earnest conversation. (laughs) This is why you have a googly eye. And then, he, and then, like, Cody points to the WrestleMania sign that's just on the wall in whatever their little <laughs> office room is. <laughs> oh, man. Well, I, I'm excited for Cody's return to WWE. I hope that they don't fucking botch it in a way that just makes it uninteresting or unexciting. I hope that it's exciting and that it's it's gripping and that it's not just going to be like, yay, you know, let's see how, Cody and Sheamus at WrestleMania. Um, that's a great match, but it doesn't, like you said, it's it's a random episode of WWE Superstars. Like, Cody will be the new Cesaro by June, for yeah, sure. sure, 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 sure. I'm sure. calling but it. At least for the beginning, I'm excited. Um, uh, Super fun to speculate on. Uh, This has been a very, very entertaining conversation. We need to head on over to some hotline action. But before we do, uh, we want to thank once again, everybody who joined us live. Uh, If you would like to join us live for these recordings, you've got to become a pro wrestling Palski patron, a Patreon Palski over at pwpalskis.com. The lowest tier possible gets you access to the live feed. So every single patron gets access. Now, If you want to challenge the current PWP champ, Zach Ayafuso, a.k.a. Fusebox, the current PWP champ, you've got to become a championship Palski. Every single month, we have the championship Palski Battle Royal, where we draw a winner at random to see who the champ is that month. And that champ gets a ton of perks. You get some free merch from the shop. You get to pick one of our watch alongs. You get special, special recognition in the discord. That's what Tamina said. And of course, at the top of each and every one of these live streams, your name and lights. So kudos to you, current champ, Zach Ayafuso. And again, please consider showing your support for the pod by becoming a Patreon Palski at pwpalskis.com. Scott, say goodbye to the live stream. Bye. 747-666-5606. That is the number to the Pro Wrestling Palski's hotline. Scott, do you want to see what we've got on the hotline this week? Sure do. Hello, everyone. It is Spits of Retribution here. And I am calling to talk about The Undertaker. Uh, News just dropped today that he is going in the Hall of Fame. Congratulations to him. He has definitely earned it. Now, a lot of people are speculating that he's going to show up at WrestleMania to have one final send-off in front of the crowd. And I definitely understand why people like that, but for me, I don't want to see him in character again. I don't want to see the Dead Man Inc. I don't want to see The Undertaker, Biker Taker, even any ver- I said goodbye to him twice now. I said goodbye to him after WrestleMania a few years back. It was very heartfelt and emotional. I said goodbye to him at Survivor Series a few years back. It was very heartfelt and emotional. Uh, but I'm just done saying goodbye to The Undertaker. Um, you know, I, I, maybe I'm heartless. Uh, but anyway, that's what's going on. I'm curious about your thoughts on The Undertaker making one last appearance, uh, delivering a boot or a tombstone or a choke slam, and walking off into the sunset in front of a crowd. Anyway, have a good day, y'all. Bye. Mass Llama, a.k.a. Spitz, uh, very apropos. Uh, we were talking about this a little earlier. Uh, he disagrees with me. I want him to have one big send off. He is sick of saying goodbye to The Undertaker. I like that he said it. We said I said goodbye to him twice. And I'm thinking only twice. <laughs> Weren't there like five last Undertaker matches? Yeah, that Roman Reigns one in Florida. I remember being there with Dale on the floor and, you know, and it gone on for a long time. We got the chairs cut and, you know, we're, he's one to walk out. I'm going like, wait, this is something weird. Yeah. And it felt like this is the this end. Is it. Yeah. But there there wasn't a bunch of us going, okay, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> um, a, I, that wasn't the greatest right there. But yeah, we're just thinking of everything else and see you later, buddy. Take I it easy. Yeah. 
I don't think we're going to get it. Like he just said like, oh, maybe a big boot or some quick little move. I don't think we're going to get that at, at Mania. If it is, it's going to be, he's going to beat Cody Rhodes in a squash match. Uh, <laughs> but I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think that, I don't know. The guy deserves to be in front of the crowd one more time and in character. I, I do want him to do the entrance because I just feel like that farewell. I remember being really emotional that night on the night. But I don't know that it was for the right reasons. It wasn't Which just night? the Survivor Series. No, yeah, night? no, no. The fa- the final farewell. Yeah, the Survivor Wait, was that Survivor Series? Series. Okay, it was. I couldn't remember if it was the following SmackDown or something. Yes. So the final farewell night. I remember just being sad, not because he was leaving, but because this is how he was leaving. Yeah, it was overproduced, weird garbage, and it's yeah. like he's just in the ring and going. I hope this works. I right. hope these words mean and say something, but. And he's talking to the, he's talking to the fucking crew members. He's talking to the camera ops. Like, yeah, they're like, should we turn up the Shane O'Mac chance? Like, no, no, no. Okay. Just <laughs> keep him cool for a second. It's uh, I, I, I think number one, your business wise, this all makes sense. Selling tickets to oh, hall of fame, to WrestleMania, to all the stuff to go, Hey, you're going to see the undertaker. He's here. I always want to see every legend before they're outed as being a horrible piece of shit human or just (laughs) something. It's like, I want to enjoy them. I want also, I want whoever that is putting the show together to feature them in ways that I would be happy to see along with other wrestling fans that would go like, what a, what a great moment at WrestleMania that we got to see all those years later while it was too short, like, uh, Hogan and Piper and Mr. T and Orndorff all backstage and, you know, just getting into it again, you know? Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Th- that sort of thing where it's like, yeah, that's, that's, a, that was cool. We get to see Hogan and Austin and rock all in the ring at 30 fucking around drinking beers that there's these types of moments and taker is harder to fit in those because we, sure. we try to keep him the dark mysterious the character. character but- yeah. The character is so, so established. But he should certainly be allowed to speak to other wrestlers and share yeah. stories and yeah. honor his uh, the the Hall of Fame career. Like right. that does that's not about your goodbyes. That's about celebrating the dude's career. And right. then anything else is like it's gravy. We get to see the guy. He's alive. He's doing whatever. Don't make him dance all the time. Don't make him. Sure, that's fair. Go wrestle. Go do this. Go do that. If they're there, like it was always cool seeing Pat Patterson showing up and it's like, hey, we're in Montreal. This is a Pat Patterson night. Right. Go have a fucking show in Death Valley. It's Undertaker right. night and have him show up and right. people can honor him. It's it's there to be had, I think. Sure, sure, sure. When we're going to get a lot more into that next week um, on this very program, mm. uh, but specifically about the uh, WrestleMania appearance. Uh, I, I, I just disagree with Mass Lama here fundamentally. Gave it to him, and then from there on, let him do, let him do whatever he wants out of character. I do want to see the... I want to hear it one more time. I want to see the walk one more time with the crowd reacting to it uh, because, boy, that Thunderdome was sad. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's the dude... Does, of, of all the things he deserves, that's literally the least. Is Is the standing ovation... Yeah, the, it's it is the last he's done his last performance and got no ovation. Yeah. Let him have the actual ovation it is the, the curtain call. Let him have it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, But thanks for the call. Mass Llama. Always great to hear from you Uh, once again. If you would like to call, leave a question, comment or just, you know, tell Scott how sexy he is. That is 747-666-5606, or you can email a voice memo to hotline at pwpalskis.com. That'll do it for this week's show. Uh, super fun. Always a blast hanging out. F- make sure you uh, do all the things. Snag some merchandise. Uh, support the show by snagging some sweet merch over at pwpalskis.com. You can click the shop there. You can also click the Discord link the Discord is a blast. It's a constant conversation all week long. You don't have to, uh, you know, wait for the episodes to drop. You can just talk about wrestling with a bunch of like-minded, very friendly folks uh, all the time. And it's completely free. It has nothing to do with the Patreon. The Discord is available to everybody. And by the way, it's the best way to watch pay-per-views of any company. And every week, I've noticed that it, there is now sort of a, uh, a 
a dynamite watch along every week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm always too late to catch it. So that's the only time where I'm like, I have to mute this, any of the <laughs> notifications, because they're going to uh, excitedly and rightfully so say what's going on. Sure. Um, but uh, but it's a super fun, uh, really lovely community of people who have become friends and we want you to become a friend as well. So please join the discord. It's really easy to use. If, if a technical dum dumb like Scott can figure it out, you can definitely figure it out. Yeah, I just can't remember how to do the spoiler content all the time where it blocks out the stuff. Like, I always have to ask Gilbert, like, how do you do the thing? And then I go, I shouldn't ask him. I bother him too much with this. Um, so uh, join the Discord. Get bothered by Scott. And uh, while you're over at uh, of course, click the Patreon link, become a patron, uh, get all those great perks, get the weekly watch along Wednesdays and pre-shows, tons of fun stuff there. And uh, find us on social media at PW Palskis. And what else, Scott Narver? Is that it? Did I do we have all to things? say thanks to our current <gasps> Patreon Palskis. We have to say thanks to can't, the Palskis. We, we can't shun them. The and, only uh, place, the only place where you get a retribution name. Yeah, because I don't think Taker's going to do it in his Hall of Fame speech. I, I don't even think he knows who those guys are. No idea. So we do it for you. So thanks to AJ0314, a.k.a. Binary, Alex Pierce, a.k.a. Figs, Alice Raider, a.k.a. Invasion, Andrea Beeler, a.k.a. Pollen Hate, Brad from Tennessee, a.k.a. Dry Rub, Brian Holloway, a.k.a. Thundervoid, Gilbert Short, a.k.a. Goliathon, Mass Llama, a.k.a. Spitz, Michael Beltran, a.k.a. Limestone, Miguel Diaz, a.k.a. Bipod, one and only Nuggets, a.k.a. Double Dip, Pete Garit, a.k.a. Rhymes, Tim Bemis, a.k.a. War Trek, Tim Redbeard, a.k.a. Blood Fuzz, Tina Keys, a.k.a. Lockup, Tom Hader, a.k.a. Cupid, Tony Griggs, a.k.a. Big Griggs, Zach Ayafuso, a.k.a. Fusebox, a.k.a. The Champ, and he had a great pick for the watch along this week, the champion pick of, uh, of uh, Owen Hart versus British Bulldog for the European Championship. So the inaugural. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, that's, Jacob mentioned before, one of the perks, and it's a super fun match that we do for Watch Along this week, and uh, I, I was delighted because I had never seen that match before, so thank you, Zach Ayafuso. Yeah, thank you to each and every one of you for your continued support, and again, if you want to challenge Zach Ayafuso, uh he and the championship Palskis among him will be in the Battle Royal next week where we will name March's champion. We could uh, also just give out his home address. <gasps> yeah, let's let's that should be a new thing that comes with the championship. You should have to yeah, defend go it literally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, this has been a blast. Thank you so much. Find me on Twitter and Instagram at Jake Lloyd Bacon. Find Scott on both of those at Scott Narver. And that'll do it. Uh thank you guys so much for hanging out, for being here, for being a part of it. It's always a blast to hang out with you, the Pro Wrestling Powskis. Hey everybody, Jake here from Dragon Wagon Radio, and I'm here with uh, Mark E. Extreme and Skeeter Skyflyer. Did you just have to read that? <laughs> okay, um, I mean, yeah. I, no, I, I, no. How, how could you possibly not know who I am? Because uh, my name is Mark E. Extreme, 15 plus years undefeated backyard wrestling entertainment champion and owner and the host of On Your Mark. So I'm offended that you don't know who I am, and I'm here with the sh on my shoulder. As Skeeter Skyflyer. I mean, a lot of people don't know me, but it makes sense that people don't know you too. Look at everybody. I'm a pretty big deal, okay? Well, I'm, I mean, no disrespect, uh, Mr. Extreme, I assure you, but uh, you mentioned you have a podcast on the network called On Your Mark. What exactly is On Your Mark? On Your Mark is the best wrestling podcast on the airwaves. Every Wednesday, we are deep diving into wrestling topics like giving you a perspective like you've never heard before because there's nobody that can give you a perspective like I can. Well, a lot of people could give the perspective that you give on wrestling, but they're busy being wrestlers and being really successful in the ring and working and being in front of millions of people every <laughs> week on television and in a crowd. There's nothing different. All right. I think I get what's happening. It's comedy. You guys are just doing a bit. Mark, you're like every 90s wrestling kid stuck in the past. And Skeeter, you're like the idiot little brother type who just loves everything, no matter how cheesy it is. I get it. You're, you're playing characters. You guys are like a pro wrestling version of Jimmy Glick or Tony Clifton. Uh, well, I don't know who the hell those guys are. And, you know, frankly, the, I'm kind of offended because I take this business very seriously and there's nothing funny about what we do. Right, Skeeter? That's right. So tune in every Wednesday. A new episode drops weekly covering new topics on on your mark show.com also wherever you're listening to your podcast right now it's 
Dragon Wagon. 